Hello viewers, I, Associate Professor of Physiology, Dr. Hassanah. Welcome you all to my today's lecture on Hemostasis Part 1. So, I'm going to share my PowerPoint presentation. I hope it is visible to all of you. Now I can start my conversation. Actually, bleeding after injury is a common experience for most of us. But bleeding stops automatically within a few minutes. However, suspicion of a disease arises when the, there is a frequent and prolonged bleeding with minor injuries, such as during shaving, cutting of nails, or a fall on the knees. There may be spontaneous bleeding in the skin, gums, or into joints and muscles. Spontaneous means without any apparent trauma. It is in all such cases that various tests are, tests are carried out. So now, what is hemostasis? Actually, hemostasis word comes from a Greek word. Hema means blood, stasis means halt or stoppage. So the hemostasis is defined as spontaneous arrest of bleeding after smaller vessels are injured or ruptured or otherwise damaged. Now, what are the events or the fundamental steps of hemostasis? There are actually four steps of hemostasis. Number one, the very early response or the most immediate response following injury to blood vessel, it is the vasoconstriction. And this vasoconstrictor response persists minutes or even hours. So how this vasoconstriction occurs? Actually, there are three important mechanisms that are responsible for the vasoconstrictor response following vascular injury. Number one, when a vascular sputum, due to injury, when a vascular sput muscle is stressed, the response will be constriction of the vascular sput muscle. Actually, this is a protective response and this is called myogenic or mechanical response. Number two, it is the nervous reflex. Actually, it is uh, happened due to pain-induced sympathetic activation results from a vascular injury. Okay, so this is called nervous reflex. Number three, the later one, the, this vessel constriction is maintained and potentiated by secretion of vasoconstrictor substances like endothelin one from the damaged endothelium, very, very important, endothelin one that is secreted by the damaged endothelium. And that is actually potentiate the vasoconstrictor response. Then serotonin and thromboxane A2 from the activated platelet and the traumatized tissue. So, this vasoconstrictor response actually instantaneously decreases the loss of blood and also helps in platelet plaque formation. That means this vasoconstrictor response cannot stop the bleeding, but it can decrease the loss of blood in amount. Is it clear? Okay, so this is, that is the very first response of hemostasis following vascular injury. Number two, very, very important, that is the formation of platelet plaque, or sometimes it is called primary hemostatic plaque or temporary hemostatic plaque. 
Why this is called primary or temporary hemostatic plaque? Because this platelet plaque is not a stable one. It may wash out or disrupt at any time by the flow of blood. Now, the question is how this platelet plaque is formed? So what is the mechanism? So actually when a blood vessels get injured, the exposed subendothelial collagen and the von Willebrand factor in the injured vessel will attract the platelets. Why they attract the platelet? Because the platelet surface contain a special receptor called glycoprotein 1BX for them on their cell membrane. And this receptor can interact with the von Willebrand factor, thereby get adhered with the subendothelial collagen. So when the subendothelial collagen is exposed due to injury, the, now platelet comes in contact with the damaged vascular surface and adhere to the exposed vascular collagen by a complex interaction between this surface receptor glycoprotein 1B and the von Willebrand factor. So this phase is called platelet adhesion. Now this platelet become activated and this activated platelet secret multiple factors including ADP platelet activating factors. This is called release reaction. Now this ADP and platelet activating factor activates the nearby and other platelets. So what will happen? Ultimately, this newly activated platelet, they get adhered with the original activated platelet and forms the aggregate and causes aggregation of platelets, okay? And this aggregation is actually promoted by a by fibrinogen and another important platelet surface receptor called glycoprotein 2B3A. So actually by interaction between this surface receptor glycoprotein 2B3A and the fibrinogen uh, helps in formation of platelet aggregation. And ultimately this addition, release reaction and aggregation, this process goes one and one. And finally, they form a primary hemostatic plug or temporary hemostatic plug or simply called platelet plug. So, dear students, you can easily understand so if there is any defect in this platelet in any steps of platelet plug formation, that means that will lead to a unstability of the platelet plug and finally results the bleeding disorder okay and the time required for the formation of the platelet plug from the onset of the oozing of the blood from the injured side that time is called bleeding time and that is usually normally one to six minutes or less than seven minutes okay now for better understanding in this figure, you can see that how the platelet uh, get adhered with the subendothelial collagen. I have already explained that there's a receptor on the platelet surface called glycoprotein 1B1X. And that will actually interact with the von Willebrand factors and thereby get adhered with the exposed collagen fibers. So here the von Willebrand factor plays the critical role to help the addition of the platelet with the subendothelial collagen. That means if there is a deficiency of von Willebrand factor that also leads to dysfunction in the platelet addition and cause a bleeding disorder or hemostatic defect. Okay, now you can also see there's another receptors that present on the platelet surface called glycoprotein 2B3A. Actually, this receptor uh, binds with the fibrinogen. One end of fibrinogen binds with the one platelet and other ends of the fibrinogen binds on another platelet and thereby they actually helps in formation of platelet aggregates. 
So if there is a, any dysfunction of this receptor, glycoprotein 2B3A, that will further result in a defect in the hemostasis due to disturbance in the platelet aggregation process. So the whole, you can see here the whole picture. This is the subendothelial collagen and the, actually this von Willebrand factor, they acts as a breeze between the platelet and the subendothelial collagen. Okay, and the, this time the platelet surface receptor, glycoprotein 1B plays the role. Okay, and the, another receptor, you can, uh, you know that glycoprotein 2B3A that actually play uh, interact with the fibrinogen and ultimately helps in the formation of platelet aggregates. So if there is a deficiency of this receptor glycoprotein 2B3A that will lead to the development of another disease called Glanzmann thrombasthenia. Thrombasthenia means the platelet count is normal but the function of platelet is abnormal. Okay, so if the a patient having the normal platelet count, but still there is a defect in hemostasis, uh, there may be a defect in this receptor. Okay, and again, you will understand that if there is any deficiency of von Willebrand factor, that will leads to dysfunction of this uh, platelet adhesion with the subendothelial collagen, leading to a disease called von Willebrand disease. Okay, is it clear? I think it is so simple to understand. Now, the next step after the formation of platelet plaque formation, the next step is formation of blood clot. And this is also called secondary hemostatic plaque. Actually, clot formation occurs in and around the platelet plaque and the plug is a stable one. This time, this actually, this uh, blood clot, they strengthen the primary hemostatic plug. That is why this plug is also called the definitive hemostatic plug because this uh, blood clot strengthen the primary hemostatic plug. Okay, and the final step that is eventual growth of fibrous tissue into the blood clot to close the hole in the vessel and also repair the damaged area. That means in the normal hemostatic response involves the blood vessel wall, the platelets and the clotting cascade. So three important component that plays a critical role in the hemostasis process, what are those components? Number one, blood vessels, platelets, and the clotting factors or clotting cascades. So if there is a, any defect in any component of this three structure, that will ultimately lead to defect in the hemostatic plaque formation. Okay. Now, so again, here you can see, this is the blood vessels and that is the endothelium lining. And say here is the site of vascular injury that will ultimately uh, expose the subendothelial collagen and this exposed collagen will attract the platelets. So platelet get added here with the exposed collagen at the site of injury, then that activated platelet will ultimately attract the nearby platelet and forms a, a, a platelet aggregation or platelet aggregate. And finally, this primary hemostatic plug or platelet plug is strengthened by the formation of fibrin thread that is called by the process of coagulation. So this is actually definitive hemostatic plug or secondary hemostatic plug. So now I want to tell you uh, very short about the von Willebrand factor because you have already uh, seen that there is an important role of von Willebrand factor 
in the platelet adhesion with the subendothelial collagen. Okay, so von Willebrand factor is made in endothelial cells and alpha granules of the platelet. So what is the source of von Willebrand factor? So it is actually produced by the endothelial cell and is also secreted by the alpha granules of the platelets. The von Willebrand factor is also present in the subendothelial matrix of normal blood vessels. Okay. So following endothelial injury, exposure of subendothelial von Willebrand factor causes adhesion of the platelet primarily via the glycoprotein 1B surface receptor of the platelet. I have already explained. So actually this von Willebrand factor binds with a platelet surface receptor named glycoprotein 1B. Another important functions of von Willebrand factor that it helps in transport of clotting factor eight and nine. So, and thereby there is a role of, uh, there is also a role of von Willebrand factor in the coagulation process. Actually that will be discussed in my next lecture part two. Now the very, very important figure you can see here, so what are the substances that are secreted by the platelet, okay? So you know there are two important granules present within the platelet cytoplasm called alpha granules and dense granules. Dense granule actually contains the ADP, ATP, serotonin, and calcium. So when the platelet become activated, they will release these substances through the open canalicular substance. Another granules, alpha granules, they contain some adhesive protein like fibrinogen, von Willebrand factor, fibronectin, thrombospondin, or thrombostenin. There are some growth factors, PDGF, platelet drive growth factors, tissue growth factor, beta, fibronectin, platelet factor, thrombospondin. This alpha granule also contains some coagulation factor like fibrinogen, factor five, factor nine. This chart is, this figure is very, very important. So you should know what are the contents of alpha granules and dense granules of the platelet. Because you know there is a uh, important phase in platelet plaque formation that is the release reaction. So when a platelet become activated, they will release these substances from their granules, okay? And another important structure I have already explained, this surface contain a special receptor called glycoprotein 1B that is actually mediate the platelet adhesion with the von Willebrand factor and finally with the subendothelial collagen. And another surface receptor called glycoprotein 2B3A that actually interact with the fibrinogen and helps in the formation of platelet aggregate, okay? Now, up to this, this hemostatic plaque formation. So what are the tests used to assess the integrity of the platelet plaque formation? This is the step number two. It's a very, very important or very common test, bleeding time. So what is bleeding time? Actually, it is the time interval between the skin puncture and spontaneous unassisted stoppage of bleeding. That means the time required for the formation of platelet plug. Once the platelet plug is formed, that will actually close the uh, hole or seal the uh, damaged area and stop the bleeding. Okay, so that time is called bleeding time. Normally, this bleeding time is less than seven minutes, but actually this is the uh, in the uh, Duke's method, but in the uh, there is another method called IV's method. There is a little more uh, time is required. That is up to nine minutes. That is normal, but the most commonly the reference is uh, that is clinically practiced or used. Normally, it is less than seven minutes. Okay. So bleeding time actually assess the integrity of the platelet, okay? 
bleeding time is routinely assessed before any surgery or dental procedure. The bleeding time is prolonged in platelet deficiency or dysfunctions of vessel wall defects. Another condition that also increases the bleeding time that is the deficiency of von Willebrand factor. I think you understand I have already explained what is the actual role of von Willebrand factor in the formation of the primary hemostatic plaque. So this is actually breeze the platelet with the subendothelial collagen. So if there is any deficiency of this factor, there will be a defect in the formation of the platelet plaque and ultimately bleeding time will increase. Another important uh, test that is uh, used to assess the integrity of the platelet plaque or platelet uh, hemostatic plaque formation, that is the platelet count. You know, normal count is 1.5 to 4 lakhs per cubic millimeter of blood. However, significant bleeding may occur when the platelet uh, count decreases below 50 50,000 per cubic millimeter of blood. But in the some books that is uh, mentioned, that's when the platelet counts become less than the 20,000 per cubic millimeter of blood, the patients experience spontaneous bleeding, okay? So this count is also called critical count. So when the platelet count uh, decreases as low as uh, less than 50,000 per cubic millimeter of blood or less than 20,000. That will, uh, that will lead to a very critical condition and the patient will experience spontaneous bleeding. Okay. Now, so assessing the integrity of the hemostatic mechanism, especially in the diagnosis of a bleeding disorder, platelet count is a must. Do you understand or not? I think you understand. So there are also some other testers that are that can be used to assess the integrity of the primary hemostatic plaque, like a capillary fragility test of his. This is also another name is called tourniquet test. Another test named platelet aggregation test. Another one is platelet adhesive adhesiveness test. Okay, so all these tests actually. Uh, they are they can be used to assess the integrity of the primary hemostatic plaque formation or platelet function. So if there is a, any defect either in the vascular wall or in the platelet number or platelet function, that will ultimately increase the bleeding time. That is the very important. So in the subsequent lecture, we'll learn the different uh, bleeding disorder or pathological condition related to defect in hemo hemostasis process. Okay, so thank you very much today. This is the first part of the lecture from the hemostasis. The next part, I will talk about coagulation. So, I expect, I hope if you like my lecture, you will subscribe my channel and like, comments and share. So stay connected with me for the next part of this lecture. Thank you very much.